What's up everyone? So today I'm here to show you some books that I got recently and I want to tell you about how I went to one of the largest used bookstores in the entire country. So a couple days ago I went to the John King bookstore in Detroit, Michigan. I drove almost two hours to get there and it's the largest used bookstore in the state of Michigan and one of the largest used bookstores in the entire country. So I had never been to it before and I was very excited to check it out. Um, I've known about it for a little while. I've seen pictures of it online and yeah, it's one of the largest used bookstores there is. So why wouldn't I be excited to check it out, right? It's four stories high. They have an elevator. They just have just tons of books and it's just crazy huge. <laughs> so yeah, I would naturally, I was pretty excited to check it out and it was huge. There was, I don't know how many books they had, but if I had to take an educated guess, I would say probably well over a million. There's just aisles and aisles of books it's easy to get lost in the store almost for how big it is they just have a ton of stuff it was pretty crazy a pretty surreal experience just walking in there is just you're surrounded by just shelves upon shelves of books it's just endless and then there's a staircase you can go up and it's just another giant room just filled with probably hundreds of thousands of books of all different genres and categories and I didn't want to spend forever in there. I did have to work later in the day. So I asked one of the employees if they had a horror section because that's mainly what I read, as you guys already know. So I wanted to check out their horror selection. I would figure they probably have a pretty decent selection of horror, right? So I asked and then I went to the horror section where they told me it was. It was on like the third floor. And unfortunately, <laughs> they didn't really have too much horror stuff. Um, way in the back on the third floor, they had one bookshelf dedicated to horror books and only like two or three of the shelves were actually being used for horror so there was maybe i don't know like 50 to 100 horror books in total maybe a little over 100 it was not very many at all so i kind of looked through them a little bit there really wasn't anything that interested me interested me on there and i asked another employee if they had another horror section somewhere because those were just all like cheap paperbacks and they said they really don't. That was pretty much all they had. So, yeah, <laughs> I was pretty disappointed to say the least. Um, I was looking around a lot. They had a lot of like sci fi and fantasy books and like a Western section and that kind of stuff. And I was kind of looking through there to see if maybe some horror was scattered into there. And I was also looking in their fiction section, which um, those books were categorized by authors. I was kind of browsing those shelves a little bit. And I could not really find anything that was interesting me. Um, and then I went to the young adult children's section. And those books weren't really categorized by genre or author. It seemed like they were just kind of all over the place. Just lots of young adult and kids books. Most of them very obscure, random titles I've never heard of. And I was looking to see if maybe I could find some R.L. Stein books. Some vintage Goosebumps or Fear Street or things like that. And I could not find anything. I browsed the children's and young adult section, my eyes just scouring the shelves, looking for those spines with Arl Stein, his name on them, and my eyes are pretty trained to spot Goosebumps titles to pick them out of the bunch, because that's essentially what I'm hunting for, is trying to find some of those rare books to complete my collection, and you guys know he's my favorite author, but I did not find a single book by Arl Stein. Or even some of the other YA authors that I really like, like Lois Duncan, or I didn't find any Christopher Pike books, nothing of that sort. So, needless to say, I was very, very disappointed. Uh, I didn't really spend long in the store. It was fun. I don't regret going. It was fun to check it out and just browse the endless aisles and shelves of books. But it seemed like they they were a store more dedicated to... A lot of nonfiction books, biographies, uh, books about music, uh, life, history, just a bunch of different stuff like that. And they did have a huge fiction section too, but again, it was categorized by author, and it did not seem like they had much of a selection of horror or anything like that. The only genres they had a lot of were like romance, western, and sci-fi and fantasy was decently big, but yeah, I don't know. It was fun. I'm glad I went. But I only ended up buying two books, and I probably won't go back, to be honest. But anyways, enough of me rambling on. Let me show you the two books that I bought. And I actually, real quick, did take some books there for in-store credit. So I essentially got these two books for free. And that is Tarzan of the Apes and Return of Tarzan. I've been wanting to read these original Tarzan books for a while. 
and I've just never come across them, but they had a whole bunch of the Tarzan books at this store, so I just decided to pick up the first two in the series, and like I said, I basically got these for free because I took some old books with me that I used um, to exchange for in-store credit or whatever, so yeah, I'm excited to check these books out. They're not in the best shape. Um, the binding on this one is kind of falling apart a little bit, but yeah, it's whatever. Again, I don't really regret going to the store. I'm glad I went there just to check it out and say I've been there now, but it's not one I would go back to. I don't think it's a good store to go to for readers like us that are into horror and suspense and things like that. So after I went to that store and being kind of disappointed, I didn't really want to go home empty handed. So I stopped at another used bookstore on my way home. It's one I've been to before. It's a smaller bookstore, but they actually have a decent selection of horror stuff, a lot better than the John King bookstore. And I picked up a few things. So it turns out that the this smaller used bookstore I went to, they were having a 10 for 10 sale. So you buy 10 horror or fantasy books and you get, or you buy 10 books for $10 is basically what it is. So yeah. And I didn't know they were having this sale initially. I went there, picked out four books, got to the checkout and the lady told me they were having this sale. And I asked her, well, what will it cost if I just get these four? And it would have been $10. So I basically got to go and pick out six more books for free. So yeah, I didn't find anything super crazy or exciting, but I got quite a few books here that I'm interested in. So I'll show you what I have. Um, the first one is an old sci-fi classic, H.G. Wells, The Time Machine, and The War of the Worlds. I've been wanting to read H.G. Wells' work for some time now. I do have The Invisible Man by him, and I love that book. One of my favorite sci-fi stories. Um, that one is kind of like a comedy action sci-fi tale, and it's just very engaging and funny, and I really like The Invisible Man. Great book. And I've been wanting to check out his other stories, so... And I found this old book by him, and it's in pretty good shape, too. The binding is fairly tight on it. This book has only been read, like, maybe once or twice. So, yeah, I was pretty excited to find this one. Um, next up, I have Blue World by Robert McCammon. Yet another Robert McCammon book now. I believe I have, like, six of them, and I still have not read a single one. I'm not sure why I keep buying his books. Um, maybe subconsciously, I believe that. I'm really going to love him, and he's going to be one of my favorite authors of all time, and I'll, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I have a bunch of his books now, and I haven't read any of them yet, so I'm hoping I like them, and if not, um, I don't know. Let me know if you're a Robert McCammon fan, and I'll send all of these books to you if I don't end up liking them. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah. This one is actually a collection of short stories, by the way, and I didn't know that right away, but yeah, so I don't know. This will be interesting. Um, these next two books are actually ones that I already have copies of, but these ones are in far better condition than the copies I have. And you guys know I'm a little bit picky. I like my books to be in good condition. So that is Richard Lehman's The Traveling Vampire Show. And this book is basically brand new. There's a little bit of a creasing on the spine. But again, this one's only been read like maybe once or twice. Like it's in pretty good shape. And next up is Red by Jack Ketchum. And I have not read either of these books yet, but I do have them in my collection already. And again, this one is like brand new as well. So hopefully I like these books. I'm not sure what I'll do with my other copies. Maybe be sell or trade them or just give them away. I'm not really sure yet. But yeah, I did get those two. And like I said, because of their 10 for 10 sale they had going on, I basically got like half these books for free. So um, Robert Block's Psychos is the next one. And I had to look this book up because I wasn't sure what this one uh, was initially. And basically, this is an anthology that's dedicated to Robert Block. I guess this was published after um, he passed away. And it's just a collection of short stories written by other authors that are, I guess, kind of in the nature of a Robert Block story. So, yeah, I'm kind of curious to check this out. I still haven't read anything by Robert Block. I haven't even seen um, the movie adaptation of his novel Psycho yet, which I know is like a huge classic. Um, everyone talks about it and... It's like one of the most iconic horror movies ever. I still haven't even seen that yet. I want to. I just haven't gotten around to it. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll check this collection out and see how it is. And eventually I'll get to the movie and um, possibly read some more of his older works. So, yeah. Robert Block's Psychos. This book is a little bit rough. This one's not in the best shape. But it's not terrible either. The binding on it is still fairly tight. It's just got some edge wear and creasing on the corners and stuff. But it's not too bad. Um, next up, this book is actually one I wanted to read, especially after watching Plagued by Vision's review of it, and that is Deadly Eyes by James Herbert. Um, this is 
also titled The Rats. It says right here, originally titled The Rats on the cover. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but I'm guessing this is like a reprinted edition. Uh, I'm not sure why they changed the title or, yeah, I don't know what that's about. But yeah, I'm really excited to read this book. I have not read anything by James Herbert before. I've heard a lot of really good things about him. And I also really like stories about creepy rats. And I really like stories about animals in general, like horror like when animals attack, that kind of thing. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm hoping I'll enjoy this. And it's a shorter book, too. It's only a couple hundred pages. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited to read this one. Oh, what's this? There's artwork in it? I didn't even know that. Oh, I guess this was adapted into a movie. That's what it looks like. It looks like I have, like, the movie version. Or not the movie version, but I'm guessing this was released around the time that the movie come out. And they put pictures in here. From the movie movie stills or whatever i didn't even know that i just now noticed these uh images huh interesting i kind of i don't know i would prefer a version without images in it but yeah i don't know <laughs> hopefully i'll like this book interesting i didn't know i think maybe i did hear that it was adapted into a movie i just forgot about that but anyway moving on we have dark moon rising by james thompson and i just grabbed this one because Come on, it's a werewolf novel. I have to, right? I looked it up on Goodreads afterwards, and it doesn't have very many reviews, and the ones it does have, I believe, are like one or two star reviews, so it's probably not a very good book, but as you guys know, I love werewolf stories, so I don't know. We'll give this one a try. Next up, we have, surprise, another Robert McCammon novel, and I think I just grabbed this one because uh, this was one of the free ones I grabbed when I was rushing through trying to find six more books to get that 10 for 10 sale. So, And I couldn't decide what I wanted, so I just seen another Robert McCammon novel and decided to grab this one, Mystery Walk. I now have like seven Robert McCammon books and still have not read a single one of them. Um, next up, we have Cthulhu, The Mythos and Kindred Horrors by Robert E. Howard. Now, I had to look this one up, too, because I wasn't really sure what this was. The name Robert Howard sounded familiar, but I didn't really know anything about him. And I guess he was a science fiction horror writer in the early 1900s, along with H.P. Lovecraft. And I guess this is um, his story is based around the Cthulhu mythos created by Lovecraft. So, yeah, I'm curious to check this out. As you guys know, or you might know, I love H.P. Lovecraft, one of my favorite all-time authors. I love his short stories. So creepy. So good. Just classics and i'm curious to see how another author um plays into those mythos and kind of creates his own lore and stories surrounding those so yeah i don't know we'll check this book out and see if it's any good or not i'm not expecting it to be um anywhere near as good as lovecraft stories but we'll see and lastly we have a classic but somehow a book i've never read and that is stephen king's the Shining. And again, this was one that I just saw that I grabbed uh, when I was trying to pick out a few more to complete that 10 for 10 sale. And obviously, I probably don't have to talk much about this book. You guys know all about The Shining. A lot of people say this is one of the greatest horror novels of all time. It's a classic. Everyone knows about the movie. Personally, I'm not a fan of the movie. If we're being honest, I just don't like it. I actually had to watch it um, in my English class in college for English 112, it was kind of like a horror theme class, which was really cool and fun. And we watched a couple of horror movies. And one of them we had to watch was The Shining. Unfortunately, I didn't really care for it all that much. I didn't think it was that great of a movie. I didn't really see all the hype around it, why it's so popular. But I am curious to read the book. Um, as you guys know, I'm not the biggest Stephen King fan in the world. But I have read a few of his novels. I really like his short stories. I tend to like his short stories more than his novels um, from what I've read so far. But yeah, I am curious to read this. I'm sure it's as good as everyone says it is. Um, I don't know if I'm necessarily going to fall in love with it or anything, but I'm definitely willing to give it a read because it just seems ridiculous that as big of a reader as I am, I have not yet read this horror classic. So I definitely have to get to this at some point, especially now that I own a copy of it. So yeah, I just decided to grab this one. I figured I might as well. I got to read The Shining at some point, right? Um, so yeah, that's, that's all that I got. So not a huge, crazy book haul. I didn't find anything super spectacular. Like I said, I didn't come across a single Goosebumps book. 
not even at the smaller bookstore I went to where I got all of these horror novels from. So that was a little bit disappointing, but I got some stuff here. I still got to check out one of the biggest used bookstores in the country, and it was a lot of fun. So um, that's about it, guys. Let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on these books. Have you read any of these? Do you really like any of these authors? Um, yeah, just get down in the comments and share your thoughts. Um, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching.